I'm joined right now by the roundtable Hugh Hewitt, the conservative talk show host, an MSNBC political analyst, and April Ryan's a White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Networks, and Ginger Gibson is with Reuters. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Ginger. This uh, the the deal. Let's talk about Trump. How do you put something in blind trust and still have it owned by your kids? And so every time Trump picks up the newspaper, the Wall Street Journal, whatever he reads, he sees somebody bought a hotel in Mumbai or somewhere, and he goes, "Why did they do that? Get her on the phone." You know, it seems impossible for a worldwide empire to be blind to him. It is impossible. He'd have to liquidate and have someone else run it entirely for it to be a blind trust. Really, what he's talking about is having his children run the operations, and that still creates a number of problems for him. One is not going to have a hard time believing that when they talk on the phone or they're sitting at the Christmas dinner table, that the topic of business won't come up, or vice versa, that his dealings with other countries won't be made aware to his children who are running the business. It's just a very right, tricky well, situation. Well, the problem is, April, is there a solution for this guy except selling everything he owns? I don't know what the solution would be to make progressives happy. Well, you know what would make people happy is for him to be open and honest and to somewhat separate himself from the statements that he said of Hillary Clinton when he was running for president, calling her crooked Hillary and how she had certain dealings. He has got to come clean and show that he is not going down that questionable path of being able to have his children as advisors possibly and still, uh, and they run a business and he's still kind of hearing a little bit what's going on. But you have to remember, we have seen other presidents or presidents-elect have to give away or put in blind trust uh, their businesses. We've seen Jimmy Carter, remember Jimmy Carter, and George W. Bush. Now, what is he going to do? There is a precedent to this. Yeah. He's not the first one to do this. Hugh, what do you do? What do you Jack think he's going to make a prediction? Have a blind trust. He's going to do a memorandum of agreement based upon the Hillary Clinton memorandum agreement with the office of the president elect done in January 2009, signed by Valerie Jarrett, which she broke, which says, These are the ways I will deal with my business and with the foundation. They have to lay it out with great specificity. But I want to repeat what Rudy Giuliani he said earlier, 18 U.S.C. 2008 does not apply to the president. It will be a memorandum of agreement. He's got a great White House counsel and Doug McGahn out of uh, Jones Day. They will get it done. They will publish it, and he's going to have to abide by it. And I think he will. I think this is so overblown. How would he just to get it to the average person who doesn't understand that with such sophistication? How you have an empire in front of you in the newspapers, watching it move hotels here, hotels there. How he doesn't wink or say something to Jared Kushner? Tell Ivanka to keep that hotel. The he only, doesn't ever do that. If he does that, the only punishment for a president in the Constitution is impeachment. And so if he has a memorandum of agreement and he violates the memorandum of agreement, there is no prosecution of a president. But that the is, only solution. But that is. is why he has got to come clean okay. and, and, and he's been able to skirt around the laws before and follow okay. the laws and skirt around but he's going to have to show that he is doing everything above board and transparent okay. so people can have how do you stop him. guys from throwing stuff as well you know when you interviewed Yasser Arafat I didn't know about this till it happened but they always said well we'll stay over there in Ramallah Ramallah uh, he liked you to stay there because he owned a hotel so get a bunch of rooms as part of the interview deal it's all just sort of assumed that's how it works because and then you end up staying back in Jerusalem somewhere but the fact is what stops some for, third world guy to say oh by the way Mr. President, my way in here, I made, I got 20 rooms over at the, the post office building. Yeah, you know who stops him? Fred Fielding. That, that's why Ronald Reagan did not get in trouble. He had Fred Fielding. He's got Doug McGahn. It requires your White House counsel office to be on top of your hyper-partisan loyalist and to keep the bad guys and the influence And to keep the, uh, the, the, the potentates that come from trying to buy them. Yes. The biggest problem he has isn't prosecution, it's image. Right. If he's trying to pass an infrastructure okay. bill and we're talking about who stayed in Trump Tower last night, that's a bigger problem mm -hmm. for him than anyone pulling out codes or prosecuting okay. him. It's all about uh, We're going to be talking about this that. for a long time, uh, Hugh, and I understand the difficulty of explaining it because the average guy out there, just like he doesn't understand why Goldman Sachs gets another Treasury Secretary, mm -hmm. you know, or why this Mr. Establishment Republican, all these Republicans voted against, the ultimate establishment figure, and he's going to be Secretary State to go, well, who do we vote for here? These guys? These tired old frauds? Anyway, the roundtable's sticking with us. And up next, these three will tell me something I don't know. By the way, we're back with the Hardball Rounds of April. Tell me something I don't know. Well, there's a growing concern within the intelligence community in this nation that Donald Trump will not necessarily have intelligence people at the table when they're working on issues of intelligence when it comes to allies and partners. They're thinking that he's going to start off with what he knows best, business, doing business deals instead of looking to the intelligence community. I won't even use them. He won't even get the there's briefing a, there's every There's a growing concern. Well, 
W got the briefing, but it didn't do any good. Go ahead. We've all talked about Carrier today and the deal he struck with Carrier, but really we need to be looking at AT&T, Time Warner. We need to be looking at Apple. Those are the deals on the horizon, and whether or not Trump involves himself in trying to decide and, and make a role in those business deals is really going to be more key than a 1,000 jobs in Indiana that really was mostly because his vice president is from the state. And I believe that by Friday the big two will be filled. I think you'll see General Madison, Mitt Romney, and I think he wins the year with those two appointments. But I also see three names, Rick Grinnell, who was passed over for the UN, Jim Talent, who was in the running for defense, and John Bolton, who was in the running for defense. Uh, all will get something important. Dep Secretary, Jim maybe Talent's Rick impressive. Grinnell. Hmm? He's an impressive former senator, yeah. Yes, he is. And, and Jim knows what he's doing. He'll end up Dep Sec yeah. or something, and Grinnell will end up in Paris. Do you think Trump would ever have been hired by uh, Mitt Romney? Uh, to do certain things, he yes. He would never make him Secretary of State, for example? No. Okay, he would have made you. him Secretary of Commerce or maybe okay, International maybe, Trade. Yeah, that's, you're being very generous. I mean, thank you. I don't believe a word of it. What you, <laughs> you don't believe it either. He, he looks down on this guy. <laughs> April Ryan, thank you, dear. Thank you, Hugh Hewitt. Thank you, Ginger Gibson.